training and e-learning initiatives at Longsight, and I'm going to be talking to you today about Sakai badging for professional development. Can I just kind of get a show of hands with how many people are familiar with badges and maybe have used them or at least know a little bit about them? Okay, good. Most of you. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, um, but just to kind of give a, an intro to the topic, um, basically digital badges are, you know, awarded in recognition of an accomplishment or skill. Um, it's very similar to, you know, the Boy Scout or Cub Scout badges that maybe you got as a kid, um, but these are electronic, so they allow for easier sharing um, via social networks, um, things like, um, you know, LinkedIn or Facebook or any place where you have, you know, connections in sort of the digital space. Um, it's easy to share these types of credentials. And um, one thing that makes them very appealing um, for educational purposes and professional development purposes is the fact that they kind of feed into that whole notion of competency-based learning and um, micro-credentialing. So, you know, for example, if you have a, a four-year degree from you know, X college, um, a potential employer might know that you have a certain general skill set but they might be interested in something very specific, a particular competency, that it's difficult to tell just from a transcript. So um, what badging allows people to do is sort of showcase those individual specific skills that might be um, useful to them in a professional or academic context. Um, a lot of institutions and organizations are doing this now. Um, you may have, you know, some badges yourself. <laughs> A lot of, um, like, Educause is now giving out badges for attending some of their events, some of their professional development um, series and seminars. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, I believe the Smithsonian gives out uh, for attending certain events or being, you know, a, a contributor or partner with, um, you know, contributing funds. So there's different types of badges you can earn. And really, it's up to you as far as what, um, your creativity would, would dictate as far as what you would want to credential someone for. Now, um, in my case, I decided to do one on Sakai badging. Um, oh, but first let me just talk briefly about Mozilla. Um, if you're not already familiar with the Open, open Badges, um, that was kind of what started the, the standard for making them compliant so that they could be easily shared. And this is just sort of an image of um, how it kind of works. You have uh, your issuer, which would be maybe um, a company or um, an institution, and then you have a badge backpack, which is housed in the cloud, um, and that's where you sort of store all these digital assets. And then you have places where these are displayed. So the end user would earn a badge, put it in their backpack, and then they can share it out to any of the social networks that are meaningful to them. So that's kind of the big picture. Yes. Do you mind if I interrupt you about the um, about this? Because sure. I tried um, to get that infrastructure set up mm -hmm. with no luck. Um, and is, is that something that you can end up getting into about how to get that infrastructure set up? Um, the piece that I'm going to show you today is really based on just existing Sakai functionality on how I've kind of structured it. And I'll talk a little bit more about how I'm going to deliver the badges. But I didn't actually do, um, you know, set up the whole um, open badge architecture myself. This is just kind of an, in general, broad terms. Okay. Yeah. And if you'd like to get that infrastructure set up, are there services that assist you, or? There are several, and I'm going to talk about one of them. Okay. So, yes. Any other questions before I move on? Um, so that's just kind of the big picture. If you are interested in getting more information um, about badges, um, the Open Badges website is, is very rich, has a lot of resources. There's a wiki there. And there's all sorts of information for developers, contributors, people that just want to issue badges or earn badges. So there's all sorts of resources there for you. Um, also, Hackstack is a curated collection of resources. So there's links to articles and um, other resources for faculty or instructional designers um, that you can check out there. And then Credly is um, the service that I, we actually use to issue badges to make it a little more seamless. So, and that's, yeah, you may be familiar with Credly. 
um, they kind of handle the, the back end of that piece of it, of, of the awarding of the badge and making it able to be shared out to your social networks. Okay, so for my project, I wanted to do something with badging. And in my position as you know, being in charge of training, it made sense to do something related to supply training. So I thought, well, you know, what can I credential people for? And, um, and so I decided that it made sense to credential people for different user roles in Sakai. So, um, so what I did is I kind of came up with a three-tiered um, system, three different le levels of badging. You could get credentialed as a Sakai instructor, a Sakai trainer, or a Sakai administrator. So those are sort of the three buckets that I, I put into for a badge each. And, um, and I wanted to do this via Sakai for a few different reasons. Um, so you know, why, why do this at all? I mean, what's the value in creating these badges? Because there's no, I mean, it's just a little you know, icon, really. <laughs> there's no monetary value necessarily. Um, it's really more bragging rights, right? Um, it's something that you can put out there and share with people and say, hey, I have this badge that says that I can do this particular um, skill. And I don't know, I'm sure many of you, I know I myself have served on many hiring committees where we needed you know, to bring in either instructional designers or faculty or um, people to help run the LMS on campus. And you know, we were looking for specific skills. And since we used Sakai in our institution at the, where I was at the time, um, we would look for people who had some experience in Sakai. That was a preferred requirement, right? So it would have been great if I'd had some sort of credential that I could look at. Because sometimes people just list a few things on a resume, and you don't know how they used it. They might list you know, five different LMS products, but you don't know if they were a student, if they were a faculty member, if they actually you know, worked on the back side of it. Um, so it kind of helps to recognize some of the skills that are out there and um, provides more information for people who might potentially be looking at your resume on LinkedIn. Um, or maybe um, you know talking with you and seeing what sort of activities you're involved with. So um, I wanted to provide a way for Sakai users to validate their accomplishments. This wasn't set up, and, it, and I'll show you the site. It's not really set up as a training site because my target market really is um, people who already know Sakai. So I'm not teaching you how to use it. I'm just giving you a place to kind of credential that you know it, um, so that you can. And display or demonstrate your skills, and then have a, a tangible item to show for that. So, um, so we wanted to be able to, to gamify it as well, because that's something that's an interest of mine. I'm actually also a, a doctoral student at Nova Southeastern, and my, my dissertation is based around game-based learning. So, it's something I wanted to try out and see how kind of all the pieces fit. Um, so, this was something that, that I wanted to do just for personal interest as well. But I do think there is something to that gamification um, concept. Um, whether you're interested in earning all the badges or not, I mean, there is a, a, a sort of a motivational factor there of being able to um, you know, kind of pick and choose and decide what you want to do and, and have that little digital credential that you put in your backpack. And you know, it's, it's kind of like you collect cards or you collect <laughs> whatever you can collect digital badges. So um, another reason that I wanted to do it in Sakai using the existing fun functionality is that I know a lot of faculty are interested in using badging in their coursework um, to motivate students to maybe get a little bit of a gamified experience going in their courses. So this could help me illustrate to people how they might use Sakai to be able to do some of those things. So, um, so the first thing I did is I defined my three levels of badges, and I talked about my audience already, but I had to kind of decide, you know, how much was I going to cover? Because, again, it's not training people to use Sakai necessarily for this. It's more just showing that they, they already know it. Um, so I wanted to, had to be very specific. Can you guys hear the drill in the back? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little distracting. <laughs> Um, I had to be very specific in what I was trying to, to accomplish here with this. Um, and then obviously I selected the delivery platform as Sakai, but um, you know, I had to choose which uh, tools to use. I used primarily lessons to structure it, um, and then I used um, tests and quizzes for some of the assessments, and then also the assignments. 
Um, but again, I wanted it to be an example of what somebody could do in their current class, like right away. Um, and then once the badges are earned in the course, I had to determine um, how I was going to get those out to people. And that's why we went ahead and went with Credly because uh, right now it's um, not natively supported to award badges directly from Sakai in terms of you know, sending it out, sharing it. You could certainly put in a mechanism where you send uh, people an, an image, that would work. Um, but Credly, what that does is it allows you to officially verify it. So if people go to it on the web and they can click on it, go to the issuer's website and see that it, you know, it's a validated issuer. So it's, it lends it slightly more authority because <laughs> you know that it's coming from a legitimate um, place and not necessarily just somebody who created their own badge and just stuck it up there with you know nothing you know behind them representing it. So that was kind of the idea of going with Credly to um, maintain that part of the course. <coughs> um, but we are interested, and is Matt here? I see him. No, no, he's not here. He's not up there. Oh, okay. Um, I, we're, we're talking um, amongst ourselves at Longsay. Um, we'd like to be able to be able to do some of this directly from Sakai. <coughs> and so we were talking about ways and possibilities for maybe an LTI uh, tool that would plug in that would do the Credly portion of it so that it's, it's more self-contained um, within the system and you don't necessarily have to have another account outside of Sakai. It's kind of all within the course. So that's what we're brainstorming. Um, we haven't done any development yet on that, but that's something that we're definitely interested in. Um, so, you know, we're trying to gauge the interest in the community for something like that. Um, now, in terms of building the, the site, I had to map out, you know, what does it mean <coughs> to be a, you know, trained Sakai instructor? What, what should a typical, you know, trainer know? What does it mean to be a, a Sakai admin? So I had to kind of think about things, you know, what would I look for in someone, you know, coming in, maybe applying for a job or or um, you know, coming in and, and uh, demonstrating a certain skill set um, and identify how I'm going to assess that because again these are badges you know so we didn't want to make it too hard we didn't want to make it so impossible that nobody would do it but we didn't want to make it so easy that anybody off the street could just say boom I have a badge and then they have this credential that says that they can do something which maybe they can't. So it was kind of that trade-off, and there's always that tension in education between, you know, an authentic assessment and loads and loads of grading, <laughs> and you don't want to get yourself caught in, you know, this endless, um, you know, grading cycle. <laughs> but again, you want it to be fairly um, rigorous without being overly rigorous. So, um, so what I settled on was um, some challenges, or, or actually multiple quests, <coughs> which is how I've, I've structured it, um, that are set up as quizzes. And those are auto-graded. You get immediate feedback, so you know right away if, if you pass that quest. Um, and then quests combined into missions, where you can do a certain number of missions, and then you unlock a boss challenge. And once you unlock the boss cha challenge, that's kind of the capstone. And that one's a little more personalized. That one uses the assignment tool. That one has to be manually scored. So that's kind of how I, I compromised with the tool set that I had available to me. Um, and again, I, I used testing quizzes for the quests. The assignment tool was for the boss challenge. Um, the levels are the different roles, instructor, admin, trainer. And then everything feeds into the gradebook. Because thinking ahead here, I wanted it to all go into the gradebook so that if eventually we do get some sort of LTI tool that can automatically pull that gradebook data and award those badges, we want to make it easy for ourselves down the road. So all of these items feed into um, the grade book, and then the, the boss challenges, that's a selective release item. So um, that's released by group. Once I see that they've completed all the multiple choice stuff, then I, I add people to that group and they automatically get access. So um, leveraging a few of the, the features of, of lessons. Now once I get it into the grade book, um, my calculations were a little more complicated than the grade book can currently support because it's, it's very much based on player choice. Um, so it wasn't a specific set of activities, it was whichever ones you choose and a certain number of each type. So I export everything out to Excel and then I have a bunch of formulas in Excel that do what I want it to do. So 
So it tells me who needs a badge, um, who's earned the, um, who's unlocked the boss challenge, that sort of thing. So let me take you on a short tour. Um, I'm going to try the internet and see if the wireless will cooperate with me. If it doesn't, I have screen captures. Give it a sec. Hello. Okay. So here's the badging site. And um, the badges are shown here as, yes. Oh, you're not I seeing think it? You're right. Okay. Let me this. There. Did it catch up yet? I'll just end the show and then go to the browser. You might have to drag it over. Other way. Is it a Mac or a PC? PC. Uh, if you do Windows P, it will give you your options. And Chrome will be an option. I think your desktop is extended. That's a good thing. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this is the badge I'm saying. It's a little compressed here, but um, I'm used to two monitors since my display was <laughs> extended. Um, so if you go in here, you'll see there's a little welcome message. And um, the, the badges that are previewed here are previewed in, in grayscale just because the badge itself is kind of the, the prize. So you want to give the whole thing away to people um, until they actually earned it. So, um, so it just tells you a little bit about it. And let me switch to the student role so you can see. I've got most of the stuff in here hidden because I wanted it to just be very focused on, on the tasks that are available to them. So again, I've used the, um, the lessons tool to provide an overview um, of how it works. You have a number of quests, and each of these you can earn 75% or higher um, to pass a particular quest. You need to um, earn a certain number of quests to complete a mission. And then once you complete the required number of missions, then you unlock the boss challenge. So that's kind of how it works. And if you go in here to the instructor area, you'll see it. It just gives you kind of a little quote and um, a, a blurb about, you know, as a kind of instructor, what that is. And then you've got some missions to unlock. And you only need to do three of these. So there's six of them available, six different missions that you can choose to accept. <laughs> but uh, and you can do more if you want. If you're just motivated and you want to do all of them, feel free. Um, but you don't have to. You only need to do three. And then when you go in here to um, any of these individual ones, then you'll see that there's, again, some more choice here. Because that's a real important concept in, in gamification and in games in general. Is you want the player to be in control. You don't want to <coughs> leave them by the nose too much. So there needs to be a little bit of structure. But there also needs to be a player choice. So you know maybe you don't use the chat room tool at all. So you really wouldn't have anything you know, to do with that one. But maybe you do use announcements and, and messages and forums. So you can you know, cherry pick the ones that you actually um, use from day to day. So those would be the ones that you would be more likely to be able to answer the questions correctly. And, um, and by the way, I did something a little bit tricky over <laughs> here. These are multiple choice, but I also included an open-ended question for each of these. Um, because what I want is to gather more questions from the folks who come in here to do the badging so that we can continually randomize the question set. Um, because after I came up with 200 multiple choice questions, quite frankly, <laughs> I can't come up with any more right now. Um, so I really would like to you know, encourage people who are in here doing the badging to submit a multiple choice question for that particular quest. And then those would get fed into question pools to randomly draw the next set for the people who sign the work. Um, and in constructing the questions, I'm trying to keep them not too specifically tied to a particular version. 
Um, there are a few that are, are slightly version specific, um, but I try to keep them mostly, you know, kind of general functionality, um, so that it wouldn't be necessarily, you know, 2.9 only or, or Sakai 10 only, so that you'd have a little bit of, of flexibility there. Um, and we wouldn't have to rebuild that question pool every single time. We could just pick out, you know, any that have maybe become more outdated and um, repopulate with new questions. So anyway, so that's how that part works. And you can go through the first one. Um, deals mainly with communication, some of the communication tools in Sakai, because that's a, a real um, strength, I think, of Sakai, is the multiple ways that you can communicate with students. The next area deals more with content delivery and um, importing content, building content, um, using resources, using things like the syllabus tool. Um, the next one is collaboration. So it focuses more on some of the more collaborative tools in Sakai. And sometimes it's a subset, because forums was part of communication, but you can also have group forums. So you know it's kind of a subset of skills here as well. So they're not narrowly defined as just a specific so specific tool, it's more a specific um, learning objective. So the next one is assessment, um, where we talk about different types of assessment. Now, I dealt mainly with the core tools, so NIMI is not in here, although I did include modules. Um, so, and, and gradebook 2 is not in here, because again, it wasn't the core gradebook. Um, but again, there's a lot of choice there. So if you're from an institution that uses one of those contrib tools, chances are you can find three other ones in here that you do use. So hopefully you can um, use those instead. And then there's one on evaluation. Again, this is more grading um, exercises and also post them. And then site management, so um, those kinds of administrative things that you do in the, the site info area and statistics. And that's it for the instructor challenge for um, the ones that you have available. Once you do, again, three or more of those, you get to unlock the, um, the final challenge. Yeah. I like your graphics so well. Oh, thank I you. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I actually did the badges, but then we had a graphic designer um, Megan Sidel, who did the other, um, I worked with her to, to do a little the Sakai in, in various <laughs> at the different levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're so adorable. We did a for each one. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we got the insider. Yeah, I liked it. I <laughs> thought it was so cute, the little hard <laughs> hat and stuff. So, um, so for the trainer, um, what I did here is because I started thinking, well, you know, they've already done all this stuff at the instructor level. There's no need to redo it. You know, once you verify that you know something. Why retest, right? You've already you've beaten that level. Um, so what I did here for the tool whisperer mm -hmm. is um, is all of the tools, but you need Ooh. to know more of them. So if you've already completed these at the instructor level, then they're already checked off. So it's tied to the same assessment, and you get when you go through as a student, it'll check off the ones that you've completed. So you can kind of see at a glance where you stand. Um, so the tool whisperer goes through all of those, and this one is also shared with the admin role because again, you want that sort of broad spectrum of the tools. So if you complete these at the trainer level, you don't have to redo them. Um, and then the next one under training is the workshop wizard, where it just kind of goes through, um, you know, things that you would typically do when you're preparing for a workshop, audience analysis, those types of things that you. You want people to be mindful of if they're doing, um, you know, faculty training or something on your campus. And then the admin one, again, the tool whisperer is shared, um, and then the super user is more of those um, administrative tasks. So um, you can pick five of these um, in addition to the other ones, and it builds on each other. So if you're, you know, if you're an admin. And you just do the faculty one to start, and then you come back later and just kind of you know, progressively build on the, the, what you've done so far to earn a point. Now, um, the gradebook, I changed it to score because I wanted it to again, be a little more game-like. Um, we're not really grading. They do all have points associated just for completion, and so I can see that you passed a certain threshold on the assessments. But mainly it's just to, um, to add up the 
items that you've done. Um, so again, it all feeds into the gradebook, and students can view their own, um, you know, which ones they've completed in here, um, and then I would download the whole gradebook, export it, run my formulas, and then upload that to Credly. So um, before I leave the site and go back to the PowerPoint, are there any questions? Yes. Yeah. Do you have to be alongside um, nope. customer to? No, no, no. Check that out. No, actually, I would love everybody in this room to come in here and, and earn a badge. That would make me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. We want it to be open <laughs> for the community. This is really a community resource, and it was kind of an experiment on my part. So I'd love to get more people in here and you know really make it a, a very open um, resource for everybody. Can yes. you make it a joinable site then? Because try to sky up website.com is joinable. Yes. If you make that site on we can all get I actually, my last slide shows you where you can go to sign up. <laughs> okay. I'm ahead of you. We're you can't wait. We're all poised to go in. We're in there. Right now. Okay. So if you're yeah. questions, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 Sold. You had us at badge. There we go. Let's see if my screen will cooperate this time. Okay, that's the site where you can go to register, and it's completely free. Um, you just sign up with your email, and it'll enroll you in the site, email you instructions on how to get into it, and then you can just go in and start completing things. Um, and as I mentioned, the, um, the boss challenges are selective release, so those aren't immediate, all the quests are. Um, but then I'll go in you know, periodically and check to see who's unlocked each challenge and then make those available. But then you'll be notified via email as soon as those are available and you can go in and complete them. Um, now since you all got your you know, URL fixed, <laughs> um, once you complete and earn a badge, that's just showing the grade for that. Uh, okay, so once you complete the badge, then what you'll get, I, I upload the CSV to um, Credly. It's got a really nice batch interface for batch awarding badges. So I download all that data, and then I have it all in a nice Excel spreadsheet, and I just take the names that I need and upload those. So then that allows me to very easily award a whole bunch of badges at once. Um, and then you, the end user, would get an email. Um, it'll say long site via Credly, and then it'll show you your badge and say congratulations, so-and-so. Uh, -so. In this case, it was me because I was, I was my guinea pig. Um, and, uh, and you can go and claim your badge. And you do have to sign up for a Credly account, but it's free. And once you sign up, for a Credly account, you can then export it out to um, your Open Badges backpack. You can export it out to Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. So anywhere you want to brag that you earned a badge, you can send it out there um, once you claim it. Now, I, I, the badges do expire after three years because we figured after three years, you know, things change. So maybe you need to come back and refresh after three years. So after three years, they'll expire, but um, we'll have some sort of mechanism in place at that point to uh, make it fairly easy for people who already have a badge to just kind of renew it um, with, with a lesser amount of, of initial work. And I do see Matt joined us. So if anybody has any real techie questions about the LTI thing that we were sort of brainstorming about, I haven't done anything with yet, but, but he's here. So um, I dragged him in. <laughs> any other questions? Is there yes. a time frame on uh, when we have to finish each one of those? Uh, no? no, no time frame. It's just kind of open. I mean, like I said, I'll go in and periodically check to see. And I get notified via email when people submit. So I know when people are in there um, submitting things. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I don't see Mozilla Backpack as one of the options to export. When, when you set up your account, you can tie it in. So there's an option under your account in Credly to say, I want to share with my backpack. Okay. And are users able to get a backpack account right now, or is that still data? I'm not sure. Yes. I, I've signed up, yeah. but I don't use it a whole sure. lot. So, um, I, don't, it's, I don't think it's in beta. Yeah, I think it's out there. I mean, there's a WordPress plugin for um, Open Badges and BadgeOS. So I think it's out there and available. Yeah. I, the badge. 
the whole badge thing is is sort of almost bleeding edge. It's not really well uh, dispersed sort of yet, and um, so it, it's hard to find like sample badges to earn if you want to. Mm -hmm. But it but it does work with the backpack. I've been out exploring as we're we're looking at it as well, and and it's very easy to you have to kind of fight with it a little bit, sort of figure out how it all fits together. But cre I found Credly very easy to set up. So you issue the badge at Credly, and uh, when the person gets the badge, they give the credential to their backpack at Mozilla, yeah. and it'll show up. It doesn't it isn't always smooth though. So. Well, one nice thing about Credly, and I found this out when I first created a backpack account on Mozilla, is that um, the, the open badge backpack is tied to a particular email address, and there's no way to change the address. Um, with Credly, you can. You can update your email. So um, if you're, you know, if you have maybe a work email and a personal email, and you're earning badges, uh, you know, under different emails, or you change jobs. Um, with Credly, at least you can update that address or designate which one is your primary, so that you can keep those badges and they kind of travel with you. Um, otherwise, with, with the open badges backpack, I was kind of stuck. I earned like three or four badges, and then I'm like, oh, I don't work there anymore. <laughs> so yeah, um, so that was a little disconcerting. But um, but you know, you can go and re-earn them, I suppose. Um, but there's not an easy way right now to transfer them. So Credly allows for the easier transmission of badges to different systems. Yes? Um, I'm really long term plans to think about rewards associated with young data access. Um, That's an interesting question. Are you going to take people who gain badges or make more granularity in your badges? We certainly could. Um, I started with these three, but you know, now that the the sort of skeleton is there, it would be very easy to you know add different ones for different skill sets. So if it was something where you were interested in having maybe sort of a delegated access or junior admin role, um, we could certainly develop a badge around that cluster of skills and award that um, to folks if there's interest in in something. So yeah, that's an excellent idea. It does seem like a, an opportunity to mm -hmm. leverage off the skills of the institution. Yeah, absolutely. Other questions? Just a thought. <laughs> that's a great thought. Thank you. Anything else? Yes. Uh, uh, we use Gradebook too, and I was not aware that it was Contrib. I thought it was a trunk tool, and you basically had a choice. I don't know if that's is that not the case. Well, it, Course type for 10 is just standard grade book, not grade book 2. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I had, at one point, I had, I mean, this must have been misinformation that the, that the original grade book was supposed to sort of go away and grade book 2 was going to take its place. But yeah, that's, when that's it first came out, that was sort of the, the thinking, and the same with assignment 2, because that was kind of the thought when it first um, entered the scene, but it didn't really pan out that way. So the original assignment tool is, is still the core tool, and the original gradebook is still the gradebook. Because both of those continue to have enhancements and, and more work done to them, so it's a more active branch. Interesting. OK, any other questions? And uh, Matt, if you want to chime in anything. No? Oh, <laughs> I mean, so it's interesting, because it says LinkedIn is connected, but it isn't really. Yeah, it, and it posts an announcement. It like shares it, but it doesn't like put it on your profile. It's so. sort of another symptom of the fact that this is really, even though the the standard has been out there for two or three years now, mm -hmm. that this is still a pretty new thing. Yeah. And I find it kind of surprising that LinkedIn hasn't sort of offered a category where you can post your badges. They, mm -hmm. I think they probably think yeah. it's just cute at this point, and yeah. they're not that interested. But it, it would be a neat way to do it is to have a you know badges you've earned as a sort of way to show your credentials. Right. But they don't have that yet. And I think as more um, professional organizations and higher ed institutions get involved with badging efforts, I think we'll see more growth in that area. It'll become a little bit more um, recognized and not so much as this fluffy thing over here that oh isn't that cute? Because <laughs> I think that would would give it huge credibility if they would yeah, do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I mean, there's all sorts of other things you can add on your, your LinkedIn profile. You know, why not your badge? Right now, it just shares an announcement that you earned it, because I, I tested that on myself again. <laughs> but 
Okay, well, no other questions, then thank you all for attending. I really appreciate you being here, and I hope you go in and earn some badges. Yeah. yeah. Well, Will you post? Will you be posting your slides on the? Yes, I will. I was changing them right up until this morning.